Well, after four episodes, the exorcism is about to begin, but is it as simple as Father Tomas and Father Marcus thinks it is? Hey guys, remember for The Exorcist, Season 1, Episode 4, Move Before Us. Sorry it took me so long to review this episode. I meant to review it uh, last weekend. I just can't get a chance to till now. Figured I'd review it tonight because obviously there's a new one and I really want to watch it. Uh, but I was definitely looking forward to this episode. I don't want you guys to think that I disliked the last episode because I didn't. I actually really liked that episode. I just felt that compared to the first two episodes, it definitely was a bit of a slower episode. It was a bit of a step down. It wasn't as interesting as I think the first two were. However, this episode... This is definitely more of what I want to see from the show, and I will admit that the, the the scene on that train was the highlight of that episode. I really did love it. This episode, however, again was a setup type episode. It's setting up next week's exorcism, but there were so many great things that happened in this episode. I really did love it overall, and I think the show is really doing a great job with portraying this idea of you know what's going on with Casey and everything. But let's just get into this episode because I really did love it, and uh, unlike last week, Father Tomas and Father Marcus actually have substantial things to do, and that was my main thing with episode 3 is I felt like the stuff they did just didn't really need to happen yet. So we start off, we see uh, Casey's waking up, she makes her way into the kitchen where, her mom, where uh, Angela's cooking breakfast, Angela cracks open an egg, and a dead baby bird appears, but that doesn't phase her. So Casey's father, Henry, is perfectly fine, her sister Kat looks healthy and is stretching the dining room table, her breakfast is, is uh, wiggling around, I mean, and the stranger appears at Casey's side. Immediately, I knew this wasn't real. I knew this was clearly just a hallucination. Um, but he appears at Casey's side. He's slapping her when she won't eat and bind like things, bind her to the floor. And uh, it was a perfect way to start the episode. We realized that in reality, she's actually being strapped to a hospital bed. Uh, where she is for the remainder of this episode and the remainder of next week's episode as well So I really did love not next I mean tonight's episode as well So I really did love the way that started out and I really do love the way we're getting into Casey's head and We're seeing it from her perspective Casey's not the main character, but when we focus on her she is in fact the main part of this I thought that this was gonna be mainly focused on Angela, but this is very Casey centric And I think they're doing a really smart choice with that again One of the things about this show that I really like is that Casey doesn't realize that she's being possession she's slowly starting to realize really what is happening to her so Casey's being held in the hospital on a 70 hour or 72 hour hold because of the incident on the train the doctor says they've evaluating her and her family isn't allowed to visit her while she's on a hold Kat thinks that the test might help Casey but Angela's upset about being kept away from her daughter you know she feels it's obviously not safe especially because there's a lot of things she's not in the know about right now so the newly excommunicated Marcus visits one of the addresses on the back of the ticket given to him by Father Bennett. It's a convent, and he asks for Mother Bernadette, but she's unavailable. So Father Tomas then meets with Angela and Henry at the hospital, delivering the bad news that the church won't approve an exorcism. Angela says the doctors can't help her, no one is helping her, and tests aren't what Casey needs. She knows what she needs as an exorcism. She's clearly possessed, and... Father Tomas asks her to have faith in him and that he will try to, you know, get something done. We'll make sure that they're able to form this exorcism because obviously Casey needs it very badly and he will do what he can to make sure she has it. So Marcus, <clears throat> Marcus then reads his Bible on a bench. Nuns walk by carrying candles, one with injuries on her face, and Casey then undergoes an MRI. Doesn't seem to have anything wrong with her according to that test, and what she does, however, is genital trauma. Now... Remember the last episode where she burned herself with the curling iron? So the doctor believes, actually, that the burns were self-inflicted. And we know, obviously, it wasn't that. We know this is something that the stranger clearly is telling her to do. They're keeping her comfortable and will run more tests. So, very creepy stuff there. Realizing that she's torturing herself. I mean, that is an aspect of exorcism, though. I mean, when you are... Um, the devil, like I said, I think the stranger is the devil, or at least he's the head of all of this. He clearly is trying to make the demon, you know, come out as the full personality and basically do every can to extract Tracy. Not Tracy, who's Trace? Casey. I don't know why I said Tracy. Casey. He's trying to extract, you know, Casey and will do anything he can to ensure that happens. So... Marcus is told to watch the nuns who are gathered in a circle, singing in the center of the circle, a man is a man who appears possessed. They pray over him, he hits Mother Bernadette, she simply smiles, which was very weird that she didn't do anything, I guess because of reaction time and things, but she continues to try to hold his face. She embraces him, he falls to the floor, calms, but still very possessed. So a nurse tells Casey to relax, and 
the stranger whispers to her that she's no longer pretty. She's angry at the stranger for tricking her, and uh, the fact that he's now manipulating her like this, because before it seemed like this was like a seduction thing, where he was like trying to seduce her, but now you see that this is straight up torture. The nurse is finally able to find the vein for the IV, while the stranger continues to physically hurt Casey, and again, this is a great example of really great subtle horror. That's something the show really understands very well, is psychological horror We're doing so well here. I mean, this is a being that only Casey can see. Nobody else sees it except her, but it's fucking scary. It really is. I mean, this guy literally is torturing her at this point mentally, and he, again, he's just, he's physically hurting her, which is just crazy to see, and again, very creepy stuff. Uh, I don't know who's playing the stranger, but he really is doing a tremendous job of creeping everyone out. So Marcus takes a bus tour around Chicago, listening to the tour guide tell him about the many serial killers who have made Chicago their killing ground. Jeffrey Dahmer was in there, uh, just basically any serial killer you could think of that was in Chicago, and... The tour guides and bus driver won't let Marcus or anyone ask questions, but Marcus is anxious to find out more about deaths involving missing body parts, because again, we now know what they're doing with the missing body parts, which again, I thought was extremely interesting when we found out, you know, if you remember, they're using that to craft the demons and things like that, which again is very creepy, but very interesting as well, and I like the way that Marcus is kind of on now sort of like a journey for himself because he's no longer a, a you know a priest so now he's doing this to you know give himself research and fulfillment things like that that's really why he's doing it now and that is even more compelling than what we got the fact that he's no longer a priest really is just adding to his character and while i thought it was a dumb uh you know tactic at first just to make just to create drama now i'm really on board with it because it's really starting to get us to care more about father marcus than ever before so has Chapel, and she doesn't want to leave because there's still 36 more hours before Casey can be released. They both look very exhausted, and Kat's gone home to freshen up. Henry then remembers a family trip years earlier in which Casey stood by the freeway picking flowers, and he recalls that as being the most scared he's been until what she did on the train. He knew that that was not her, and he's now on board for whatever treatment Angel wants to get for their daughter. As we know before, it was kind of denying what was going on, but now he knows that whatever's in his daughter is not his daughter. I mean, she wouldn't just, you know, fucking, like do what she did to that guy uh, if she wasn't possessed. I mean, that's just not a normal thing to do. So obviously he knows there's something going on there. So, Father Tomas and his young nephew, Maria Walters, and uh, is, is with his young nephew who visit uh, Maria Walters. T Tomas explains that he wants to perform an exorcism, but the church won't allow him, so he's hoping to go above Bishop Egan's head, because again, Bishop Egan thinks it's a load of bullshit, and he asks the Cardinals, she asks if that's the right thing to do, she tells him to follow his impulses, and... I like how, again, Father Tomas, despite the fact that he wants to do this, again, he's not sure if he's betraying the church, which he kind of already has, like I said, in his whole thing he's done, you know, with that other girl, can't think of her name right now, but the nephew enters her husband's room and finds Mr. Walters in his sick bed. The sight frightens the nephew, and he runs from the room. Obviously, there's something going on there. So back at his church, Father Tomas continues his research on exorcism. He's studying when Je Jessica, there we go, Jessica arrives. She's been looking upset, and we get more into Jessica and Tomas in this episode, which I really do like seeing. I mean, that is, this is, T Tomas is the main character of the show, and they are doing a good job developing him. So the doctor needs to put in a feeding tube because Casey won't eat, and Angela still can't enter the room, but through the open door, she sees Casey's in pain, and she doesn't know why, but she knows something's, we know why, but she doesn't, and just knowing what's happening to Casey, why she's in pain, why she's looking the way she is, knowing it's all because of the stranger just makes it that much creepier, and again, they're doing a really good job with that. So Jessica's upset her husband accidentally sent her text that he meant to send to his mistress, we find out. So we now know that her husband is, in fact, having an affair. I don't think we knew this before, but he is, in fact, having an affair, as is she. She's crying. Father Tomas comforts her, telling her this isn't her fault. She doesn't want to go home, and he offers her his bed, saying that he'll sleep on the couch, and... This, to me, kind of did feel like what Father Tomas said. I mean, Father Tomas said straight up to Father Marcus that this was nothing more than a friendship, and I'm definitely starting to get that. I mean, there's some sort of romantic vibe between them, but I don't get the sense that these two actually slept together. I don't get the sense that these two, you know, have a history of that. I, I'm getting the sense that these two are very close, and they talk a lot, but I'm not getting the sense that they have been intimate in that kind of way. And I think it's interesting if the show decides to go in that direction, because there aren't many shows that do that and you know a lesser show would just have these two be in an affair and 
have her she and her husband regardless because you know edgy characters but this show actually is looking for genuinely great character development i think they're doing a really good job with that again that's something the show is just exceeding and really really well so jessica's upset her husband oh i just read that so marcus is hanging up with the bus driver and tour guy from the site from the sightseeing tour there are actually two of the names on the list that father bennett gave him and he explains that he's been excommunicated he reveals that he was an exorcist and they immediately respond by saying he must have noticed the surge in energy in activity and the couple shows him that their notebook detailing the upswing in murders and they all know about the missing body parts and that they're used for summoning demons so they all agree that's why the organs were harvested and they know that there's definitely something going on so i like that there's no one denying what's going on with father marcus you know they all know what's going on it's just no one's really talking about it because it's just really weird and they don't really know what to do about it so, Father Tomas checks in on Jessica, who's in his bed, assuring her it's not weird. Angela texts him, and he explains to Jessica that they might need to rebel against an order from the church. She flirts with him, asks if there's any other lines he's thinking of crossing. He tells her goodnight, leaves the room. Again, I got the sense that she's seducing him, but he's not giving in. And, again, I don't know if this is that they have a past, or if they don't. But clearly she, I think, is trying to get back at her husband. That's what I think. I think this is clearly her trying to get back at her husband, and that's that's what I got from it. I got the sense that Father Tomas isn't trying to be unfaithful to the church, because, you know, when you're a priest, you're supposed to devote your life to the church. The church is supposed to be, like, your your wife, your baby, your everything, really. And Father Tomas definitely feels like he's betraying them, and I like seeing that already he's trying to, you know, redeem himself. I like seeing that. We don't see many shows like that a lot. You know, a lot of shows are just put them in a down spiral, and I like the shows not doing that so far. So Angela's text includes a photo of Casey, and in the hospital room, her physical condition is deteriorating. The stranger sits on her bed. He threatens her with violence, and his own physical condition is also horribly deteriorating. It was really hard to watch. Father Tomas then wakes up. He finds a note from Jessica on his bed. She thanks him for allowing her to stay the night. And I think she kind of felt guilty. I think she knew what was going on. I think she knew why he felt this way. And I think she knew that she really could not be there for that much longer. So, Mother Burnett's finally able to see Marcus. She's covered with scratches on her face. He asks what the belladonna in the garden is for. She admits it's for extreme cases, and Father Ben has spoken about him telling Mother Bernadette uh, that uh, Marcus is a pain in the ass, and Marcus says that Bennett thinks that the church might have com uh, been compromised, and she agrees, saying that there's been an escalation in activity recently. It's been a year and a half since he lost the boy to the demon, and Marcus says he doesn't lose. So they took his collar, so he thinks it's over, and clearly it's not. So Mother Burnett thinks losing it is just an excuse he needs to check his ego at the door and they discuss their differences and how she they approach exorcisms and she invites him to join her in tonight's attempt to exercise the possessed man and i like this i like that we have a, a mother here you know a nun who actually supports exorcisms and actually understands why they need to be done I haven't seen a character like that in a long time, and again, that's really, really cool the way the show is doing that. I like the way the show is not outright saying, oh, exorcisms are bad, therefore, but this is why you shouldn't perform them. No, it's just people don't want to believe that they're out there when, in fact, they are, and I like that Mother Burnett is one of said believers. So at the hospital, Angela at this point is just going crazy, not being able to see her daughter. Kat's trying to calm her down, and I get what she's going through. I really do. I mean, Angela, obviously, you know, she's seeing her daughter in this deteriorating state, and Angela, like I said, is the most the one that's the most out of the loop. She didn't see what Casey did on that train. She didn't see any of that go down. You know, she was at her job and everything. So, you know, Angela really feels very much out of the loop, and she thinks she knows what's going on, but she just needs answers and. Father Tomas arrives, says he will need some to do something as soon as they get out of there, but uh, Kat is convinced that Casey needs specialists and not an exorcism. You know, she thinks she knows what's going on, but she storms away. Father Tomas says he can't do anything officially, but is willing to help unofficially, even though, and I liked it again, this is him saying, I'm going to do it because I want to. I'm not doing it because I've been told I can. I'm doing this because I want to help you. And it's just, I think that is a lot more meaningful than just, oh, the church said I could do it, so therefore I'm going to do it. He's doing it because he wants to help them, and I like seeing that. And again, he feels like it's his destiny to do that. So back at the comment, Mark is in the center of Circle of Nuns. The possessed man takes a swing at him. Marcus doesn't give up, manhailing the man, but then caressing him, taking his cue from Mother Burnett. He hugs him to his chest, reciting the words, it seems to be working, and the nuns help the man stand, taking him away. Mother Burnett smiles at Marcus, in indicating, job well done, and just a really well done scene. I like the way we see that Father Marcus is, in fact, able to avenge the demons. You know, we saw that scene in episode 2 where it seemed like he could do absolutely nothing, and it already seems like he's starting to get some of that courage back, and now he can actually do something, which I like seeing. 
So Casey stood up to machines as a stranger calls her an ungrateful bitch. A spider crawls out of her nose. Again, really creepy. She struggles against her restraints. The nurse comes in to help her. Casey stares at the nurse's cross on her necklace. And the stranger comes up behind the nurse, starting to strangle her with the necklace until Casey agrees to do whatever he wants. Angel rushes into the room, stopping the stranger, who she doesn't see from shaking Casey's hand to solidify the deal. And I like that even though Angela doesn't know what's going on, she knows something's going on with her daughter. It's a really well done scene there. So... I, I definitely thought that was interesting to see, and I like that she was able to stop, uh, you know, the hair from making this deal, because obviously, you know, you can't trust a stranger whatsoever. So the nose is, the nurses bandage up while down the hall, Angela yells the doctor, threatening to sue if they don't let Casey go home. He agrees, but only because he's exhausted everything he knows to try and help her. You know, he's done everything he can, so there's really not much else he can do there. So Marcus is back. He's ready to team up with Father Tomas. Marcus, in a more peaceful mood, asks if the demon's been manifesting. Father Tomas says it has. He's been waiting for Marcus, asking his help. Marcus warns him he'll lose everything if they catch him, and Father Tomas is ready to do whatever's necessary. Marcus says he now feels big as a mountain, and... I love the way the episode ends. They repair this padded room, complete with chairs, up in the Rance family attic. They gather supplies, then pray with Angela and Henry, because they don't know what's going to happen. I mean, really, they got to be prepared for the worst. They don't know if Casey's going to strike back. They don't even know if this is really going to work. So, Marcus helps Tomas put on his collar as, Tom as Tomas wonders why is this is all happening now, which is a good question. Why is this all happening now? We don't really know. It seems like this just kind of started coming out of nowhere. And, like I said before, I think it's definitely connected to those two, definitely. But, Marcus thinks that that's a good question. They enter the room where Casey's chained up. They're ready to be in the exorcism, and that is the way the episode ends. Uh, like I said, this was very much a setup episode, but a really good way to end overall. Let's just get into this episode. My predictions for tonight's episode. So, like I said, this was very much a setup episode for next week, which looks like it's going to be insane. I don't know really what's going to happen. But there's a lot of uncertainty here. The biggest thing is that we don't really know if this is actually going to work. I mean, we're only on episode 5. I doubt that they're going to get the demon out of Casey. I feel there's going to be some sort of twist that's going to stop them from doing that. And like I said, I think it's definitely connected to either Marcus or Tomas or both of them. I think it definitely involves them in some way. That question that Tomas asked, you know, why is this all happening now, is a very relevant question. We don't know why this is all happening now. It just seemed like it kind of came out of nowhere. All we know is that it's happened before in Chicago. This is not the first time it's happened, but other than that, we have no idea where this is going on, and I like that. I like not knowing, you know, what's really going on. I think that's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, the big question right now, I really do, uh, is, you know, what's really going to happen with this exorcism? The stranger, we know, is going to make some sort of deal with Casey. We don't really know what the deal was, though. What was he really going to do to her? Uh, what's she about to agree to? We don't really know. I do like that Angela is the one that's able to get rid of the stranger. It seems like she kind of has the upper hand there. Just a really good example of motherly love and how that really conquers all. The way the show does that, I think is really interesting. And I think they're doing a really good job uh, with that overall. I'm really loving where that is headed. Um... The other question, of course, is Tomas. Him and Jessica, again, I don't really know what kind of relation they had, but this episode definitely alluded that it was an intimate relation, but it was very one side. I got the sense that she wants to take things further, and he's not because he knows he's, it, that's going to be a detriment to, you know, his job and everything, and it could really ruin the church. I mean, the church already has a very bad reputation, and I like that Marcus and, you know, um, Mother... Uh, now I can think of her name, um, Mother Bernadette, they know that there's some fishy going on. There's definitely some going on. I think the church is in on it. I really do. I think there's specifically a reason why they're covering up the exorcisms because if Mother Bernadette, who is a nun, knows there's something going on, then you know that there's definitely something sketchy going on there. I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it's definitely connected to what's going on with the exorcisms. Um, I'm getting the sense that this is not, the, like I said, and we know it's not the first time this happened, but I feel like Casey's not the first person to be possessed in a while. I feel like there's been other people, and we don't really know why, but we'll have to see what happens with that, because that's going to be very interesting. Uh, the way they're getting into Casey's character in general, I think, is really cool. Uh, Kat, Kat is the only one right now that doesn't believe what's going on. What's getting her to do that? I feel she's in for a rude awakening, and it might honestly end up with Kat dead. I really could see Kat dying at the end of the season, uh, just because she's not believing what Casey is saying, and I don't know what's going to get her to think that, but she's got to believe. I mean, it's 
it's happening and she needs to realize, you know, what's really going on. I get it that she's, you know, the skeptic. She's the one that thinks radically and, you know, very logically, I mean, and not radically. But uh, she needs to really start seeing the way things are going. You can kind of tell, I mean, what's going on there. So that's going to be very interesting. I like seeing these two teaming up together. I like seeing Marcus and Tomas back on the same team. Uh, I didn't really like it last week when they were separate. I thought it was cool to see them, you know, back in doing what they should be doing. Definitely, that was fun to see. I enjoyed that overall. And I like that Henry is very much in on it as well. He knows what's going on. Angela knows what's going on. They just haven't seen the stranger. And again, the stranger, I think, is the devil. I really think he is. I think he's been the head of all this. I think he's definitely, uh, he's been doing this for a specific reason. We don't know what the specific reason is, but we'll have to see what's going on with that. I can't wait to figure out more of what's going on with this character overall. In general, guys, just another really strong episode. Uh, I've really been enjoying the show so far. As you guys know, I think they really are killing it. Not a ton to say about this episode, like I said, because it was a setup episode. There wasn't really a ton to say about it. Uh, but this tonight's episode is going to be huge. I know there's going to be a lot that goes down. Like I said, I think there's probably going to be some sort of big twist because I doubt they're going to avenge the demon. Casey's like the third main character. There's no way they're going to just avenge the demon that quickly. That's just not going to happen. But either way, guys, the most you guys saw this episode, love to hear your thoughts on it, and I will see you guys in my next which will be for the season premiere, the final season of Vampire Diaries. We'll see how that goes, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.